How's it going, people of the DC Cinematic Universe? Welcome to a somewhat discussion slash breakdown video on what is to be some rumors floating out there, of which I think a lot of you who are in somewhat more of the know are already knowing what this is about, basically. And for those of you who do not know, to get right into the heart of the video before we get into details, do not worry, I will give you a warning on any kind of potential spoilers, but this is stuff that I somewhat expected to be the outcome of The Flash movie and that is that some rumors have been floating about with regards to after the flash movie which if you've been following the channel for some time i've been saying which has never really been a surprise to me with these rumors and i'll get into the validity of them as well in that in some way shape or form barry allen ezra miller's barry allen through this flash movie which is basically a flashpoint movie with andy muschietti saying that it will just not be necessarily the way you expect, it will have an outcome that somewhat changes things in the timeline. For example, the most popular one being Michael Keaton isn't just Michael Keaton appearing in this movie, but as we know now, and I've done a video on this and I do recommend checking it out, the Batgirl movie will have the Batman in that movie as Michael Keaton. And considering J.K. Simmons, who played Commissioner Gordon in, you know, the Snyder movies, is also in Batgirl. Well, what does that tell you? After Flashpoint, it looks like this is the main DCEU continuity with, you know, Batman being Michael Keaton. So that's just a miniature teaser of the repercussions of what Barry Allen is going to do, screwing with the timeline once again, which we're quite used to seeing, not only from the comics, but through the CW TV show. It's just that we're getting it now in a cinematic universe-esque effect, which is, to be honest, something that I've been expecting for the longest time. With Warner Brothers and DC trying to make that cinematic universe and all the hiccups it had along the way, whether you view them as hiccups or not, whether you're a big fan of them but still acknowledge some of the hiccups that I keep talking about, in some way, shape or form, it didn't actually work out the best way, even though we got the Snyder Cut. There needed to be some kind of low-key way of paving the new, um, well, path forward. And that is to be done with the soft esque reboot that Flashpoint, the Flash movie, will bring us. Now, what are these repercussions? Well, we have got rumors now, and I do want to say, always, 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 always take rumors with a grain of salt. Please, please, please. Now, the interesting thing about this is that I wouldn't have necessarily believed where it came from anyway, because this person in particular, like, whether you're a fan of their content or not, like, it's just a fact. And this is the case with all scoopers, by the way. This isn't knocking on scoopers or YouTube channels. Like, for, for, for example, I get sources sometimes Sometimes I might tease something, but my issue with larger scoopers is if they assert things as fact, because then you don't actually know 100% if it's a fact when you're giving that scoop. Do you know what I mean? I always prefer and respect more if you like, well, I've heard this. It is heavily emphasized to be a rumor, but this is what I'm hearing is what is happening rather than asserting out there as fact. So, for example, the reason why I'm putting this in as a bit of a premise to this rumor is because of the originating source. They have been wrong before, to the point of directors calling them out on Twitter, if you know what I mean. So, with that, I wouldn't have necessarily believed what they tweeted out. However... Despite that, even though I knew it's know it's a rumor and nothing's confirmed right now, I still low-key wouldn't, and I tweeted this out after what I heard with the tweet basically detailing some of the outcomes and the effects of what the Flash movie will do to the DCEU moving forward, what it will remove from the Snyderverse, what it will keep, and what it will introduce moving forward. As I said, the best example without getting into too many spoilery details is Michael Keaton being the new Batman, is that I wouldn't be surprised as if this tweet was was legitimate like the rumors were legitimate of what they heard the other interesting thing is that this person wasn't alone in tweeting this when i've been voicing my opinion on twitter people have been saying well the reason why i believe this person this time is because not only this person tweeted it but this person who's a scooper and this person who's a scooper usually when there's smoke there's fire when there comes to something like this and as I said, originally, if it was down to this one person who has been wrong plenty of times before, also right, I want to add, um, I wouldn't necessarily put too much stock in it other than it's actually, funnily enough, what I believed would happen kind of anyway. But the fact that this person originating with it and then other people are coming out, well, it looks like the information we've heard about the post-Flashpoint DCEU does look to be true. And the reason why I've done such a big build up into actually getting into the meat of what this information is is because it was important to preface everything 
So you all understand why I think a lot of DC fans are starting to feel alienated. What I will say is obviously I didn't predict every last thing down to the rumor slash scoop. Not at all. What I did predict with the Flashpoint movie changing things, paving a new way forward in the DCEU, retconning some things very softly, is some of these things. But what's the interesting thing is that if some of these details are true in the rumor, it did subvert my expectations to a certain extent. Now, I do want to stress, though, that this is still a rumor. Half of it, or if most of, if not most of it, could be true, but there could still be a couple of things that might not be true. I really do want to stress that. It's just, at the bottom line, though, I do want to say I really do think something like this is going to happen because they've just been waiting for an opportunity and the Flash... Flashpoint movie is their excuse to do that. We all know what Flashpoint is. Barry F's with time. Uh, it, it scrambles a bunch of things. At the end, it's more or less attempted to be a rectified slash amended situation. But with that, well, Warner Brothers with a multiversal-esque timey-wimey story can solidify and set up their, their tower of what they want to go forward with. And also, kind of out with the old, this is where it's starting to alienate some people in with the new. Before I read out these details, is that with regards to spoilers, I wouldn't say these are Flash movie massive spoilers. It's not like, oh, we find out that the reverse Flash, I don't know, slaps Barry around the face in the Batcave. And he is actually in the movie. And it's not just the other Barry Allen copy that we see. It's nothing like that. It's more that with what the Flash movie is going to do, Keaton is like the new Batman. Supergirl is in a new universe. She's not just in the Flash movie, that kind of thing, even though we knew that already. Those are just very rough examples. Don't worry about mega, 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 mega spoilers. And I want to reiterate again that some of these were very self-explanatory things that I thought were happening anyway. So with that said, if you want to know nothing, here's your chance to dip out. As I've told you, we have an update. And I, I might read out some of the other Scoopers tweets as well, just basically reaffirming this. The Flash bat is Batflex's final appearance. Um, not surprising. Like, not surprising, guys. Now, we all know he's kind of put Batman behind him. However, I think some major Batflex fans got a bit of invigoration, you know, uh, that he might be down to do another thing, maybe like an HBO Max show. Like, there's lots of talks about that over the past half a year with his interest in, oh, well, if he's appearing in the Flash movie, maybe he's down and contracted to do, like, another kind of appearance. I couldn't tell you for sure that wasn't going to happen back then, even though I would say, if you ask me, in my personal opinion, that would be a no. Well, here, the Flash movie is Batflex's final appearance. What's one thing I've been saying on this channel for the longest time? Now, it could be completely wrong with my top of my head prediction here in the Flash movie since we do have Keaton basically taking over as the new Bruce Wayne slash Batman yes old man one who is basically training Batgirl in the DCEU moving forwards no Ben Affleck anymore well I've always said that I felt like with the rumors way back before Keaton was even confirmed by the major trades to be in the Flashpoint movie that oh apparently Keaton might be the new kind of grandfather-esque Nick Fury-esque role of the DCEU and that will be the Bruce Wayne well look at what the rumors we're hearing now Batman Batfleck's final appearance. Well, I think that Batfleck will die. I would prefer, I would prefer him to somehow die in like a cool way. And I've always said, like, if you're gonna like tee up, like, you know, in a golf S kind of way, the reverse flash, not properly for this movie, but for the future of our Ezra Mil Miller Barry Allen, well, maybe a cool way to do that would be like the reverse flash to kill him. I know some people would be like, Boba, that's a terrible idea. Batman's Batman. He doesn't die. Even somehow he would prepare for a speedster. But I'm just genuinely saying, like, what if he was completely out of left field and like all of a sudden this yellow blur, like that's crap in of itself. I know it's just like, why would that happen? Where did he come from? Why did Reverse Flash plan this? Don't take it that seriously. I'm just saying I've always said that I do think Batfleck will somehow be gone in the Flash movie and that will pave way for the grandfather Nick Fury-esque Michael Keaton role, which basically is confirmed now since he's in Batgirl with J.K. Simmons' Commissioner Gordon, a.k.a. Meaning. This is after Flashpoint, a.k.a. Meaning it's the same Commissioner Gordon as Batfleck's Batman's Commissioner Gordon, so you get where I'm going there. Well... Batfleck was gone. I don't know why anybody, uh, unless it's wishful thinking, which is fair enough, I guess, if you're such a big fan, would think that Batfleck was going to continue. I think this was more as like, hey, things have cooled down. I, as Ben Affleck, have got my shit together a bit more now. I don't want to commit to Batman as in an HBO Max or series or movie. But hey, I will appear in the freaking Flash movie in a Harrison Ford-esque kind of way. 
if you kind of write me out kind of thing. And I think it's that low-key kind of thing where he had some fun on set. It was fun to say hi to like Ezra Miller again. He, he filmed a couple of bike chase scenes as we've seen in public. If he doesn't die, I just think it would be a bit lame for Barry to fix the timeline for him to get like faded out of existence into a Michael Keaton face. I don't think, I think he should go out doing something cool. And it should, like, be a weight that only Barry remembers from Flashpoint, since usually in the comics, in some way, shape, or form, the speedster's the only one to remember what actually happened in the prior timeline. For example, with Keaton being in a new universe, to everyone else in the world, Michael Keaton has always been Bruce Wayne. It wasn't Ben Affleck's face. Do you see where I'm going with that? That's usually the timey-wimey logic. So I think that Ben Affleck should, like, either get you know, reverse flash freaking hand in the chest or something, and that, like, puts a lasting effect on Barry. I don't know. Crappy idea. I don't mind if you say that, but I don't want it to be like a, I don't know, like a time erasure face thing, because I think that would be even lamer. I want him to go out saying goodbye to Barry. I think that would be more impactful. So here's where things get spicier, because to me, that was always self-explanatory. Like, Ben, ben Affleck was going to be in this movie, but it'd probably be his goodbye, right? Th that's something I feel like I've known for months, even without it being confirmed. Here, though, old footage of Cavill used on TV. Eh, not really surprising. I suppose it's a way of doing this with Cavill still, because long story short, as far as we in the public somewhat know now, Henry Cavill has always wanted to come back as Superman. That's something he's reiterated time and time and time again. It's just that no deal has been solidified and basically Warner Brothers and Henry Cavill walked away from the table. Whether it's a thing of Warner Brothers kind of wanted to pay him less, but he felt like he was worth more. They couldn't come to a deal some way, shape or form. So they're like, well, we're not saying never ever again, but for now, negotiations have halted because we've walked our own separate ways. That's kind of been the way I viewed it ever since negotiations fell flat, with all of those trade storylines, uh, storylines, headlines coming out about that. And that's why ever since, Henry Cavill's been like, yeah, I'd be down to come back, but like, obviously I've got Witcher now and other things, but who knows, never say never. The cape, the suit is still in my closet, so to speak. They just kind of maybe need to ring me and say, hey, uh, we will uh, go with your deal. But the thing is now, yes, they're going to use some old footage of Cavill apparently on TV. That's kind of a cool way to appease fans, I guess. It's a bit secondhand if you ask me. But this is where people are getting a bit annoyed. We know we've got Sasha Calais Supergirl coming in, coming in. Sorry if I butchered her second name. Fair enough, right? I thought that was going to be the case. And this is where an example here in lies of my subverted expectations. I always knew Supergirl would be, Sasha's Supergirl would be out of Flashpoint when the timeline... Barry tries to fix it, and it's as good as he can make it again from here on out, moving forward in the DCEU. I always thought that Supergirl would be a permanent figure now, whereas she wasn't basically for we knew even in the Snyder. I mean, yes, there was theories about the pod, this, that, and the other, but now, like, we know she's here. She's already here. That's the way always everyone has known it, post Andy Muschietti's Flash movie. Like, she's always been here all along kind of thing. That's, that's what will happen. But she's going to be basically the new Superman, apparently, according to these rumors. So that's what subverted my expectations, because that's the way, apparently, we're meant to be taking this rumor and that Superman isn't Superman like the Supergirl is the Superman of the DCEU moving forward. Do you see what I'm saying there? So I thought it would be that Superman Henry Cavill was still Superman post Flash timeline restored into a Loki reference here, a sacred timeline again. I thought he would be Superman. It's just that until negotiations were sorted out again, Clark would be out there, but just doing bits and bobs. And they basically put the spotlight on Sasha's Supergirl until they decided to do something with his Superman. But it turns out that if, 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 underline if this rumor is true, they will be getting rid of, apparently, Henry Cavill's Superman and Sasha Kelly's Supergirl won't only be a new addition, but she will be replacing the soups, the Superman or super, super position of the DCEU. Like, I guess Henry Cavill is bye-bye, and even if the suit was in his closet from his perspective, Warner Brothers were kind of like... <laughs> like that, apparently. I still would like to believe that just because Flash screws up with the timeline, fixes it, except there's Keaton now and Supergirl, that Henry Cavill is still out there as Superman. But if we are to believe what is going on here, apparently it's a replacement. And the super position, as I said, was always in everyone in the public eye's view, Supergirl. And that low-key annoys me. Nothing against Sasha's Supergirl. Nothing at all. I just thought you could have two of them. Fair enough, Warner Brothers and Henry Cavill, you haven't worked things out yet, but why make the continuity with the timeline fix of Flash, the Flash movie at the end of the film, the case that it erases Superman? 
I mean, I understand Ben Affleck, right? Okay, that's more understandable. Like, the context behind the scenes. He doesn't really want to carry on. So it's like, hey, a final appearance. Now you're just making him into an older man. I, some people have issues with that. But I still think that's better than what they're doing here. Because it's understandable with Ben Affleck kind of wanting to go, okay, I'm going along this way. And I understand the thought behind bringing Keaton back. It, other people do feel like they want a younger Batman. And we'll get onto that. But I still understand the thought behind it. But replacing Superman with Supergirl, when you could have just had it that Superman is out there, and we just put the spotlight on Supergirl as something I can't understand. You didn't have to replace Superman when Henry Cavill is willing. And if you guys never, ever, ever, ever figured out a negotiation, then just, I guess you could have at least recasted to just get rid of Superman if the rumor is true and replace with Sasha Supergirl is something I felt is unnecessary despite being really excited to see Sasha's Supergirl. I just still feel like you could have kept a Superman in continuity post Flashpoint. But I guess they might not want to if this rumor is true. As I said, if I look at these other scoopers, they're saying Supergirl is now the main soups of Earth. Keaton is Batman and Batgirl. This is the next thing. And if we go back to the original one, Keaton is working with Black Canary. Interesting. I, li I literally don't really have any issue with that. It's like, cool, another way to include Black Canary in the DCEU from here on out. But um, this is another thing that subverted my expectations in, in, in a minuscule sense, not nearly as much as the other ones, because I knew that the Batman would be Keaton. And I didn't exactly expect him to be the present day still fighting crime Batman. I, I thought that maybe we might see him suit up, but I didn't expect that be to, to be a, like a consistent, frequent thing. So this isn't necessarily surprising at the same time, but let me get to it. He picks Batgirl as the new Batman. So in a similar way of uh, Sasha Kale being the super soups of the main DCEU moving forward with apparently no Superman at all. Because it's always been Supergirl now in this continuity because of Flashpoint. Batgirl is the new Batman since obviously the new Batman is Keaton and he's older. He can't keep going out there I suppose. He has picked Batgirl as the new Batman. Now, people have an issue with this, and I understand it, because it's like, I am really looking forward to Leslie Grace's Batgirl. Except, I thought that this would still leave room for a new Batman, or a Batman Beyond storyline with, like, Terry, or just something. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with having a Batgirl, and I understand, I guess, what they're going for is why I just said there is technically a Batman, because, like, obviously, Keaton is Batman, but it's just that they're, they're, what they're doing is handing down that mantle solely to Batgirl. So she's still Batgirl, but for all intents and purposes, she is filling the role, like Sasha Kelly's Supergirl is filling the role of Superman in that position as the only super, well, the only Batman vigilante Batman role is just Batgirl now. I just like room to be left, like with Henry Cavill coming back. That's my only point here. Without repeating myself too much more, I liked the idea of the Henry Cavill Superman being out there with Amy Adams Lois Lane somewhere. It's just that now... Amy Adams, Lois Lane, and Clark, Henry Cavill, have just always known that Supergirl's been out there too. But no, they're not even doing that. And it's the same thing here. It's like, okay, you're bringing in Leslie Grace as Batgirl, but why can't there also be more room for a newer, younger Batman? And I think that's what some people don't like inherently with Keaton coming back. Yes, Keaton is a big, powerful, nostalgic move. It would be cool to see a new take on an older Bruce Wayne of Keaton as well. Like, I'm all for that. It's just, I'm not saying Affleck was a young Batman, because clearly he wasn't but he was still very agile I mean uh, do I need to say anything more than just a few words like BVS warehouse fight scene it's just that's what I if I've spoken to some personal friends of mine they're like okay I'm down for Keaton it's just like they say I would rather a younger Batman in the continuity of the post flash movie flashpoint DCEU timeline and so like, okay so that's what I'm going for here I, I I get how they're doing it the older Batman Keaton I never expected him to be an active Batman so I, on top of Batgirl and knowing he would be in the Batgirl movie likely as a mentor which is like basically what we're seeing here through the the quote saying picks Batgirl as new Batman Batman, I thought he would also eventually down the line of the next several movies of the DCEU there would be a Batman again. I don't know it's just a bit weird like why wipe the whiteboard or the blackboard clean like that? Why get rid of Henry Cavill when in this post Flashpoint continuity you could have Superman and Supergirl and just make it so that they always knew that because that's how the speed timeline stuff works right? Why just hand, hand the mantle of Batman to Batgirl when you could have a Batman Beyond storyline and Batgirl together? 
I'm not saying they have to team up, but you see where I'm going with that. So that is apparently the new DCEU, and apparently a new Justice League is formed. This is where I guess it might get a little bit more spoilery. So just again, warnings for this. I'm not all for mega spoilers, by the way. Like, I don't want to know plot details, as in massive plot details of the movie, but this is more just speaking to the broader construction of the new DCEU we're dealing with for the next possible half a decade to decade. And that is that the movie ends with Flash, Supergirl, and Shazam forming a new Justice League. So some people are saying, like, you know, um, and this in this other in this other tweet from this other scoop is saying. Uh, I have a friend who's seen The Flash, and the movie will erase every movie Snyder has done. Man of Steel, Batman vs Superman, and Justice League never happened now, and erase from continuity. It's just like, the way that's phrased isn't technically true, because you will still have Gal Gadot's Wonder Woman, post-Flash movie, by the way. So it technically doesn't erase down to a T of what, what Snyder created. We're getting another Aquaman movie. We are getting Shazam Fury of the Gods. Granted, Snyder didn't start that character. But do you see what I mean? To like kind of infer like Snyder is completely erased. I see how he is in a massive way, but you can't be that convicted in that statement because it's like, well, no, because you still have Aquaman 2. You still have the next Wonder Woman movie. You still have Barry Allen, who was a Snyder character in the Flash movie. Do you see what I mean? Like, but I do get how, yes, if Henry Cavill is being wiped away and, and the main soups is... Supergirl and Henry Cavill technically never existed. That is very alienating to fans. And I think Warner Brothers, the way that I'm reading this reception on my feed, and I feel like my feed is quite nicely lined up with a variety of people I follow with opinions. It's not genuinely being favored here. And I see why. For me, it's a bit like I'm willing to give it a chance. Like I like to be optimistic about these things, but I most certainly, from the get-go of hearing this rumor information, but we again, I have to em emphasize rumor, but why I kept endorsing this in a sense is that it doesn't surprise me, guys. But I, from the get-go, back to my main point I was about to make, is that I definitely disagree with some things. Like, for example, the most fundamental one. Okay, Affleck was gone. I already knew that a long time ago. I'm prepared for that. Easily. But Superman, like, why when Henry is willing to give it another go? Granted, yeah, negotiations seem to be difficult between him and Warner Brothers. But that doesn't close- that, that doesn't mean, okay, put the spotlight on Sasha Kelly Supergirl then. For the next three years, for all I care, or four years. And that gives a long four-year period for you to then just say, oh yeah, Clark's out there somewhere. Even get Supergirl to say a line like that. And that gives enough negotiation time for him to come back. But no, apparently if they if this rumor's true, they're wiping him. Like Ben Affleck, but that makes sense. But with Henry, it doesn't really, because he could always come back. And as the Keaton thing, that one's a bit more mixed for me, because it's like I always kind of knew Keaton was this new figure of Bruce slash Batman in the uh, post-Flash DCEU continuity. However, it was surprising to me to hear that he's making Batgirl the Batman moving forward of the new universe. So the new Justice League is like Shazam, Batgirl, not Batman, Supergirl, not Superman, because they never existed, basically. Um... So yeah, that's, that's it's a bit weird, isn't it? But like, that doesn't mean that the Bat... Like, I'm still looking forward to Batgirl. But like, there's other repercussions from this. It's like, is Gotham City now, from the Snyderverse, going to be Tim Burton's Gotham? I think it could be. I think it'd be more of a modernized Tim Burton. Like, one of my videos when I was breaking that down in the Batgirl Michael Keaton update video is that I think it would be like, if you look at Blade Runner, the first movie to Denis Villeneuve's Blade Runner 2049, it's still basically the same but modernized i think they could be going for that this could be big repercussions uh but the reason why i think this is true guys if i had to put my stamp on it for the most part true at least is that there's already telltale signs guys there, there is they've been saying in articles since last year that there is a new dceu being paid forward uh to that if you look at the confirmed tr major trade articles that jk simmons the commissioner gordon of the Snyderverse, who was interacting with Ben Affleck's Batman, is in Batgirl. And that's a post-Flashpoint movie. And guess who else is in there? Keaton. So it's really well adding up. The only things we weren't sure about is like the Supergirl replacing Superman stuff. And yes, that might not be true. I do want to state that. But it doesn't seem to be just coming from one person this time who has been wrong before. Other scoopers, as in not just one, but two, but three, but four scoopers or more, who a lot of people are tweeting at me saying they follow and they've been dead on about No Way Home spoilers, are backing this up. So that's when you do at least start to entertain it a little bit more. And so I, I think that's mainly everything I had to say. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below, everyone. It's going to be an interesting, spicy response, I predict. 
I do, I will kind of caution and give the advice of at least give it a chance, see how this works. You may love the direction. I just feel like at face value though, I have is no issues with anyone who's expressing some kind of like apprehension at the fact that why did they have to eliminate, if the leakers are true, um, why did they have to eliminate the possibility of someone like Cavill returning or why can't there be a Batman as well as a Batgirl? It, it just seems like the new post Flashpoint Timeline will be Flash, Batgirl, Supergirl, and Shazam, and Aquaman. I, 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 I've got a feeling they might keep Aquaman and Wonder Woman, even though they're in the post-Flashpoint DCEU timeline. I guess, I guess they're just going to forget, since technically the previous formation of the Justice League never happened. They don't join the Justice League, but they might further down the line for the first time. I don't know. It's a bit convoluted. I thought they would do a better job at hearing this face value with a given opportunity of the flashpoint movie where it's a timey wimey barry effing with everything thing stick to your strengths bring in some get rid of some old things like affleck who wants to go anyway but bring in some new things but it seems like they're doing it in a slightly controversial way at least that's what i'm gathering from a lot of people so yeah like this video if you did enjoy it guys would really appreciate that share this one with your friends get them involved in the comment section because you know i love reading all your opinions like give me reasons why you're concerned why you don't think it could be as optimistic as i want it to be uh, because it just might not work out a certain way or maybe if it is an optimistic view from you give me a reason why we shouldn't be as apprehensive perhaps like i'm i'm interested in any and all perspectives uh follow me on twitter links as always are in the top pin comment and other links to my merch store you can maybe get a boba beanie yourself and good things like that but thank you so much for watching i hope you all have a lovely rest of your day and i'll see you fellow people of the dc cinematic universe in the next video goodbye